from Florence to Paris, in luxury, on board the Orient Express. I have just come from Tokyo. I traveled on Emirates first class and now it's going to turn out which is the better luxury travel form. My wife had a dream. Once in her life, she wanted to travel on Orient Express. I called my travel agency and they booked me a cabin. At this point, I got to be honest. I usually don't check any details on my reservations other than the date and place. I like to experience such travels as a whole new. A black Mercedes brings us to the train station from the hotel. We are right on time. The train, however, is not. We are told it's a bit delayed and asked to wait on the platform. As 15 minutes turns to 30, it hits me. We are not in Japan anymore. 45 minutes. It's hotter than hell waiting here. One hour. Can we get some water at least? One hour and 20. And then we see it. The legendary Orient Express. It started in 1883 as a passenger train from Paris to Vienna and soon was taking people all the way to Constantinople or modern-day Istanbul, stopping in Munich and Vienna along the way. In 1919, they added a southern route with service to Milan and Venice through the Simplon Pass in Switzerland. Aside from taking a break during World Wars I and II, the trains ran without interruption until the early 60s. By then, air travel was starting to pick up as the luxury way to travel, and ticket sales on the Orient Express began to lose steam. Eventually, nearly every route was cancelled. 1982 saw a resurgence of interest, and the Venice Simplum Orient Express was born, bringing luxury back to life along the southern route and extending the service to London. From the day it started rolling, people have been fascinated by it. In 1934, Agatha Christie excited mystery lovers with murder on the Orient Express. The book was turned into a movie in 1974, 2001 and 2017. The famous train has appeared in countless other films, most recently in 2023's Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. With all this history and all this hype, I just couldn't say no to my wife's dream. We have reservations for a historic cabin. It includes one-way passage overnight from Florence to Paris, lunch, a three-course dinner, a continental breakfast and 24 hours tuber service. The price is an eye-watering 12,000 euros. We arrive to our historic cabin, immediately I have questions. Where is the rest of it? The porter explains that we are free to rest here in the cabin or to explore the train freely. The luggage is in a special car, but not to worry. A porter will bring our suitcases for us to get what we need and then brings the suitcases back. This is a special place and it has some requirements. One of these requirements is the dress code. After 80 minutes wasted on the portal in the heat, I felt dirty and tired and they expect me to dress up and look properly when there is no shower and space to change my clothes. Weird, frustrating. At this point, I'm a bit mad. I have seen the room, now I want to see the restaurant. Now this, I like. The restaurant is classy and full of life. We start with a glass of Wagam champagne and the wine list. It's short, but has a nice selection. We go for the 2019 Batard Montrachet Grand Cru. There are two menus for lunch. One is a caviar menu and the other a three course called Le Déjeuner. We go for the classic déjeuner menu. The first to arrive is fresh bread with the butter imprinted with the logo of the train. Nice attention to detail. And then something happens which tells me our waiter is new. Two things, actually. First, he pours wine into a glass that already has water in it. They use the same type of glass for everything here, so I can see how that might happen if you are new. Second, he presented our appetizer as beef tata. According to the menu, it's tuna tata. Here we have bluefin tuna tata with crispy toil and condiments. The tata is rich and buttery and has a clean taste. But in terms of flavor, the dish doesn't have much going for it. Next to the menu it says Devi roasted poultry wafers with spices and red puree. In this dish there were some interesting flavors, but everything was overshadowed by the chicken that was so tough it was difficult to cut. Finally, we have strawberry tiramisu. This was the best of the three, but not nearly as rich or creamy as I hoped. I would say this lunch was okay, but I would gladly take Emirates first class menu 
any day of the week. We head back to the historical cabin and quickly realize there isn't much we can do here but read a book or watch the world go by. After a while, we decide to get dressed up and go to the bar before dinner. This is when we got to play Tetris with our subs and our suitcases. But this is much better. It has a great vibe and everyone is close together. The feeling of the dinner was almost the same as the lunch. Nothing special, nothing to mention. After dinner, we retire to the room. I can't do this. We take a seat at the bar, drink Negroni and soak up the atmosphere. The bartenders and musicians are in fine form. The music lets us imagine life in the roaring 20s. I could stay in this place forever. When it's finally time to go to bed, I can barely manage to get in. People must have been a lot smaller a hundred years ago. As I lay down, it quickly dawns on me that a good night's sleep is out of the question. After four hours sleep and waking up too many times to count, it's morning. With it comes the continental breakfast. Whole grain toast, smoked salmon, prosciutto, fruits and vegetables, and some delightful pastries with jam. We also tried the scrambled eggs with caviar. Maybe some water was left on the plate from the dishwasher and it moistened the eggs, but it wasn't that bad. Of the three meals we had, this one was the most satisfying. As we pull into the station in Paris, I reflect on my journey with the Venice Simplon Orient Express. Most of the staff were excellent. There were a few newbies who still need experience, but they have good colleagues. My favorite person was Marco. When I left the bar at late night, he obviously stayed to work. When I woke up and went for breakfast, he was already in service. Hats off. The quality of the hospitality was top-notch in general. But considering these working hours and how they still show kindness and professionalism, I got to say, it really is admirable. Then there was the food. Not terrible, but nothing to write home about. And finally, the historical cabin. I think this type of room have sell a lot of drinks. It's so small, people give up and just go to the bar. And that was the special part, the bar. With the live music, the people and the atmosphere, this is what I will remember. The one is simple and Orient Express. It was an experience, that's for sure. There were some good times and some not so good. If my aim was to sit on a train, travel five hours, eat and drink a bit while sitting in a nice bar with nice people, and meanwhile I get to A from B, then this could have been one of my best experiences ever. But it wasn't. I know one thing, I have no plans for a return ticket. For 12,000 euros, we can do better. For example, the game changer of the Emirates, which is my obvious winner for this competition. Orient Express has its own magic and atmosphere and unquestionably a beautiful piece of history. And that is it for this episode. Thank you for joining me. If you like this video, hit subscribe. See you next time. You can call me stupid.